Hello and welcome to the video. This is my annual update on kit picks. Now this is the stuff that I recommend. I regularly get asked what would you recommend for a beginner radio or for my next wing or for a quadcopter to do this, that or the other. And it's useful to kind of collect everything together to kind of give you an update on where I'm up to with what I think is really good and also what I actually fly and use. It's interesting for those of us who are lucky enough to get our hands on lots of technology and myself and other YouTube channels and also things like shops, get to have a very broad range of experience. And there are certain things that kind of resonate with you that you really like. So, you know, you'll see things like the Radio Master TX16S and then we'll come back to that radio later on. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's the best radio. It's one that I really like because I like lots of switches. I use them for lots of different things. I've got Crossfire in the back of mine. But if you don't want a full-size radio, you want something smaller, something lighter, something that fits uh, dainty your hands or something that's more portable, that might not be the radio for you. So a couple of quick caveats before we get into this. I'll put time codes down below for the individual sections. And again, options may vary. This is just the stuff that I particularly like, that I get along with, and that fits my style of flying. So first point is all of the stuff I'm going to cover is stuff that I've actually got here. I'm not talking about stuff that I haven't actually physically had my hands on and flown and tried myself. So I'm not getting paid to talk about any of this stuff. This is just my roundup of all the things that I've had in here and which ones tick the most boxes for me. So that doesn't mean that this is going to be an exhaustive list and I've tried every single four inch quad on the planet and these are the best ones. No, these are the ones that I've had in and the ones that I recommend. But please keep in mind the fact that this is based on my personal bias. If you are a hard 3D pilot in fixed wing, you're gonna like different stuff. If you like relaxing, long range FPV, you're gonna want different stuff. If you're into the flippy, floppy kind of flying, then you're going to like a particular kind of quadcopter. So these are based on my own personal experiences. Now I do have a video that talks about why reviews are subjective and why they are different. I can put a link down below if you're interested, but this is based on my own experiences. And those that have watched the channel for a long time will know the kind of things that I get excited about. So let's start with a topic that's very close to my heart, flight controllers. Uh, flight controllers are pretty much in everything that I fly. I fly very few things these days without sticking a flight controller in it. Even pretty much all of my wings have some kind of flight controller or stabilizer stuck somewhere inside. So flight controllers are something that I use and set up an awful lot here. And there are some that you will see me coming back to time and time again because they work. And this is one of those things that occasionally, you know, I get messages from people who are trying another flight controller and getting into trouble. I have tried lots of flight controllers, but it's only a relatively small set that I will always go and buy when I'm doing a new build. So for Betaflight and iNav, you'll see me with things like the Brain FPV kit. I really like the Brain FPV kit. They're a little bit different. They have vector-based on-screen displays, which for analog FPV is absolutely brilliant. It adds an extra level on top of analog FPV that other people uh, don't provide in the same way. Then for regular flight controllers, for me, I'm a big fan of the Matek stuff. I love all the Matek wing flight controllers and also the F411 WSE that's actually in that wing that I just showed you. That is a small compact flight controller that's perfect for wings. In terms of things like quadcopters, uh, SpeedyB stuff I really quite like, that seems pretty bulletproof. It also has the ability to talk wirelessly to the SpeedyB app, which is great for changing stuff at the field. There's also FC Racing F4S, uh, that tends to be in quite a few quads, uh, particularly people like Armatan. Those flight controllers seem to be pretty bulletproof and they work very well. And then the other one is things like the Holybro or Holybro flight controllers seem to be pretty good as well. And I touch wood, I've not yet had one of those let me down. So those are the ones that I typically look for when I'm doing a new build. For Ardu Pilot, then it's a slightly different list. So that's either Ardu Copter, Ardu Plane, Ardu Boat, Ardu Sub, whatever it is. Um, obviously the gold standard uh, for 
kind of semi-professional builds is the Pixhawk Cube Orange. We've looked at that a load of times on the channel. Uh, it's quite expensive. It has uh, you know an internal heater so that IMUs don't get temperature drift. It is all vibration isolated. It's very very clever. Uh, also has better support for modern protocols thanks to recent changes in things like RD Pilot 2. However, it's expensive. So I will probably go for something like a Holybro or Holybro Durandal, which is a Pixhawk variant. They work very well. Or if I'm trying to do it on the cheap, I'll go for one of the Matek flight controllers again, something like an F405 wing. Uh, I have put things like Ardu Plane on Omnibus flight controllers just as tests, but I wouldn't recommend those. Uh, they are kind of tricky to set up, but they are very cheap. The way I tend to do it these days is I decide what flight control software I want on whichever model I'm building and then kind of choose the flight controller that goes along with that. Next subject is one that's very close to my heart, flying wings. Now I love flying wings. It's one of those parts of the hobby that really has grabbed me. And I like them because they're easy to store, they're easy to transport, they're incredibly fun, agile to fly, and they are very, very versatile. You can set them up to do pretty much anything. Now there are a number of less expensive picks if you want to try out flying wings. I would recommend the AR Wing Pro. I had a little bit of a hand in helping design that one, so it's kind of close to my heart. But it is a modern uh, wing designed with lots of cooling and support for modern FPV uh, electronics and batteries as well. You've also got things like the Atom RC Dolphin. Now, the Atom RC Dolphin was one that almost passed me by, and you say a massive thank you to every single one of you that recommended that to me. I love the Atom RC Dolphin. If you haven't had one, I would get one and try it out. It is just epic fun. Speaking of epic fun, next one to talk about then is the Diatone Ripper R690. Uh, you can get these things relatively inexpensively, and although they have a couple of limitations due to their size, it's one of my favourite little wings now and has overtaken lots of the other smaller wings that are out there. Uh, the other one is the Mini AR Wing, which was my favourite wing in that smaller class until the Ripper 690 came out. I think the AR Wing now is starting to show its age. It needs some updates to support modern electronics that we use in the hobby. A couple of more expensive options if you have that kind of stuff and you, you know, honed your skills enough to invest a bit of cash. I would go for the right wing Drac family. A lot of them have been retired. I think the Nano Drac is still available. I've got the Mini Drac and the Nano Drac. Uh, they are just epic fun. They fly unbelievably well. Uh, so do the E-Wing stuff. So the Black Hawk and the Vortigo 2 that I've had here. Uh, it's much heavier, denser foam than some of the other stuff that I've got. By the time you finish building them, they tend to be quite heavy. But with a nice, strong power system in, they can be fantastic fun. Other honorable mention is the TBS Kaipena 2. That is a very beautiful wing. Uh, similar in lots of ways to the AR Wing Pro, but a lot more expensive. Uh, but that one is just one that it just... It's lovely. It's a really nice, expensive wing, uh, but it is designed with the kind of, you know, that long range stuff in mind. Moving on from wings, let's talk a bit about airplanes. Uh, now, the less expensive picks, stuff that you can get, and some of these are brilliant for beginners as well. Uh, the Hobby King Bixler is still one of the nicest models, very similar to things like the Skywalker, uh, the AXN Floater, which I'm not sure if they're still doing at Hobby King. Those things with the motor on the back uh, are great. You can put your FPV camera if you want to put one on it and have a clear view out the nose of the plane. They're relatively inexpensive. They're very stable, so they're great for learning to fly on. Other models that I really like and my, me and my friend fly a lot are things like the Walrus and the Night Walrus. Uh, the Night Walrus has LEDs in. These are both Hobby King models as well. And also the Tundra. And then there's also the Atom RC Killer Whale. The Killer Whale is a twin-engined one. Uh, it's made by Atom RC, the same people that do the Dolphin. Uh, and it's just a very gentle, relaxing, fun flyer with lots and lots of room inside. 
More expensive options, again, these are Hobby King ones, uh, Grand Tundra and also the Bush Mule. These are both larger models. Uh, the Grand Tundra is a bigger version of the Tundra. Uh, Tundra is a great flying model. It's that standard high wing cub layout. And the Grand Tundra is even bigger and more stable. It has lots and lots of thrust from the motor and prop that comes with it. Uh, other honourable mention is the Nano Talon. Uh, Nano Talon, lots of people really like. I'm not as big a fan of that, uh, but it is a very versatile layout. Uh, and I wouldn't go for the 250 gram Talon uh, from ZOHD. I don't think that's a particularly good one. But there are the next size up, the Nano Talon, I've got a couple of them and I had the NTBO, the Nano Talon Black Ops edition uh, that I put Ardu Plane in. And it's a nice model to fly. Just don't try and fly it without the prop running. Next subject then is multi-rotors. Now, I've split this into a couple of classes. Uh, the Whoop or Toothpick style, uh, pretty much anything from Emacs, to be honest. Those guys are very, very, very good at putting those things together. So if you check out my reviews, and while we're talking about this, um, all of these things will have a review or a video or two on the channel already. So if you just use a standard Google search, so, you know, Emacs, uh, Painless 360 in Google, you'll find all my Emacs reviews. Also, uh, the Mobula stuff is very nice. I've done a few reviews of that stuff. And I was impressed with the petrol, uh, or petrol, is that how you say it, from the HGLRC. It was in one of the all-in-one kits I looked at recently. Uh, loads of really good choices for the Whoop stuff that's out there. I'd recommend if you're starting off, get a 1S. Although, if you want to fly outdoors, uh, 2S is good. Although, some of the 1Ss have got quite a bit of punch. Three and four inch models are um, an area that I really like. It means that the quads are smaller, they're lighter, they're usually a little bit quieter as well, and you can get longer flight times. They come in various versions with and without GPSs. I would recommend things like the Armatan Tadpole. That's one I looked at recently, a really nice flying model. Armatan always make fantastic stuff. Uh, also a big fan of the Gep RC Crocodile Baby 4 inch. That has the GPS on and all those other pieces. So you have the return to home, oh dear function, but also in the on-screen display, you have details about height, distance, direction to home, that good stuff. Uh, the Gep RC Cinelog 25 is also one that impressed me, and also the Holly Bro Cine Whoop and the Coppice Mini are very good as well. Holy Bro, when they make a quad, uh, do a really good job in putting that stuff together. In terms of the five inch models, well, at the moment, I am a bit obsessed with the Recon FPV stuff. Uh, Dave C's designs are fantastic. This is my Recon 5. This is one of my regular flyers, and I just love it. It's just fantastic. Uh, there are probably better models out there for the flippy floppy. Uh, the Recon 4 Freestyle is better for that. Uh, but this kind of dead cat layout with the props wider apart... Um, it's just fantastic to fly. The Hollybro Coppice is also very nice, and the Armatan Badger and Chameleon, both of those are very capable, really robust 5-inch style models, and also the Gep RC Mark IV and the Gep RC Crown are both good too. Uh, the Mark IV in particular is a pretty robust thing that you can bounce up and down the field all day, and it'll just shrug that kind of abuse off. Next topic then is radio controllers um, or radios. Obviously, if you're going for a game style where you you know you want it to feel like a PlayStation or an Xbox controller, then there's a couple of top choices on the market. First one for me would be the TBS Tango 2. That's been out a couple of months now. TBS Tango 2 is a lovely radio and works really well. Uh, the Jumper T Light is really nice too. That's uh, more of a budget radio, but has everything on there for the basic stuff that you need if you want the smaller form factor and there's also the radio master t8 pro uh, that one with the screen on the top the only thing about that is the uh, the jr bay well not the bay but the multi-module bay at the back isn't a multi-module bay which is just a little bit of a shame because that's where the screen goes Common choices for the standard radio, I'm still using my trusty Tyrannus X9D Plus that I've had since 2015, and I've also got this thing here, which I also use as well. Uh, this has had all of my Tyrannus models on it, and the Tyrannus has been cloned onto here, so I can use this in, uh, in case the Tyrannus ever gives up. But this has that beautiful colour screen, uh, support for things like HTX, the touchscreen as well. 
Uh, this is kind of one that I tend to recommend these days. Uh, the TPS Mambo, which has been out a little bit as well, is also a very nice radio. Uh, nicer, uh, a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, a little bit more compact than something like the Radio Master. Other honourable mentions are the Free Sky X Lite is still a nice radio. I actually still like it. It's one of my favourite kind of handheld radios. The Jumper T16 and pretty much any other Open TX radio. There is a massive amount of choice now around for things like Open TX radios. Uh, some of them have the multi protocol module in, some of them have a single chip multi protocol module, some of them have a screen. Some don't, like the Radio Master T8. There is infinite choice at the moment. Uh, but for me, I would recommend, um, if you're not bothered about having a small compact, this is probably the one that I'd recommend. And stick with it. I'm going to talk about the stuff that I use regularly at the end. Next pick is analog FPV goggles. I've split uh, FPV into two lists as we now have the digital stuff to think about as well. Analog FPV, uh, the cheap pick for me is still the Quantum Cyclops. The Quantum Cyclops 2 goggles, I think they are now, are cheap as chips. They work incredibly well and they're a fantastic cheap way to get into FPV without breaking the bank. Common choices for the regular kind of binocular goggles that you'll see knocking around are things like the Fat Shark HDO2, which is the one that I have, which is my daily driver. Uh, I love the HDO2s. HDOs are still very good. Uh, the Fat Shark Scout box goggle is actually really good as well. That's one of those gems that's kind of been overlooked by the hobby. So if you can't get on with binocular goggles, maybe you need sight correction or you have astigmatism or something like that, uh, the Scouts are fantastic. Other Good binocular goggles. I really like the uh, Ishin EV300Ds and the Skyzone 030s. In terms of FPV models to go into them, there's only two that I would personally recommend. I've tried lots of them. I use the Immersion RC Rapid Fire and I also use the TBS Fusion module as well. Both of those seem to work spectacularly well and they're the next generation ones that are actually creating the image by listening to both the antennas all the time rather than have a traditional diversity setup where it's either one antenna or the other both of them are in operation so you get a little bit more uh, out of the flight uh, in places where you might lose an image with a traditional diversity system and I use Menace RC antennas pretty much exclusively here if they weren't supplied with the kit in terms of the digital FPV goggles, it still really feels like there's only one show in town. Um, so the DJI system uh, that goggles are on version 2, uh, issues with chip supply and making it a little bit tricky to get hold of uh, cameras at the moment for that system. But in terms of the performance and the quality, the reliability of the system, it's pretty hard to beat, but it is expensive uh, and it doesn't scale very well. You know, it's another $130, $170 per model that you want to put an air unit or air unit light into. There are two other options, of course. There is the Bite Frost system from Fat Shark. Uh, that seems to be limping on. It's been a couple of years since the Bite Frost system was initially announced. It was August two years ago, I think now. And we still really haven't seen it come out in a polished enough way. So I'm hoping that we'll see more out of that in the coming months. The other one, of course, is OpenHD, and I'm hoping to do more with that in the future, just waiting for the wiki to be updated, and hopefully we'll be able to do some stuff. I have emailed the developers, still waiting to hear back, because I'd like their help and support to make a how-to series on it. Chargers, uh, there are a couple of charger brands that I tend to trust here. Everybody has their own horror stories of whichever brand, uh, but personally, I like the ISDT stuff. I like the D2 in particular. The D2 is that thing behind me. Mine's still going after three odd years and it just keeps plodding along and doing a great job. Two batteries charged at the same time and a good old fashioned two amp five volt USB plug at the side that I can charge my GoPro, my DJI FPV controller, my regular TX16S. It can charge my, my fat chart batteries from that same thing. Other thing I have, I also have a SkyRC Q200. I like the SkyRC chargers as well. They seem to be pretty solid stuff. 
And I'm starting to get more comfortable with the Toolkit RC stuff as well. Uh, that is something that I've started to use a little bit, and they do some nice charges. In terms of RC tools, this is something that I haven't talked about before, but let me very quickly cover this. I did a video a while ago talking about the smart tools that I use, but this is a very, very quick rundown of the stuff that I've had in to review and that stayed on the bench and continues to be used whenever I'm building or troubleshooting or setting something up. First one is a JR servo checker, the Toolkit RC ST8 servo checker, the ViFly short saver. This is much more useful than expected. I use this a lot. It has an on off button. It's perfect for those situations where you find yourself having to try and plug the battery in or holding the bind button down. You can just plug it all in, hold the bind button down and then just press that button on the Wi-Fi short saver and it powers everything up. Also means that if you did get something wrong on your commissioning that it'll stop the magic smoke getting too much. Do you like the Toolkit RC M8 multifunction charger unit? I use that all the time. It can be used to check signals in and out of stuff. Um, I do have a handheld oscilloscope. This is the one that I have here. Uh, very handy for checking signals and also checking voltage levels. Um, a multimeter, which is something else that's very handy, just gives you a point in time uh, measurement if you want to see how that voltage or current is changing over time. An oscilloscope's a better bet. I'd also recommend if you're getting into the hobby, get yourself a bench FPV monitor. This is actually the screen off my Fat Shark Transformers. Uh, it sits on the bench all the time, and rather than having to peer into a goggle while I'm trying to set up something like the on-screen display layout, it's incredibly handy just to have it to make sure it's all working. And of course, you're going to need a decent soldering iron, and I recommend lead-based solder. I use a Weller soldering iron. It's quite an expensive setup, this, but it's one of those things that I literally use on a daily basis. Now, as we're coming towards the end of this list, you'll have noticed that there are some common names occurring over and over again, listed by the side of me. That is because, as a reviewer over time, you get used to brands that keep producing stuff that has a decent enough quality that you use that doesn't let you down. So this is my list of brands that I trust and it'll be different for every single pilot. But you'll notice people on here, you know, Aeronaut, Armatan, Brain FPV, E-Wings, Runcam, T-Motor, Sonic Model, Team Black Sheep, TBS, you know, it's standard stuff. Now some of the people on this list will elicit a very strong reaction. There is the fanboy effect and on the other side there's the haters. So in any forum you get people like TBS and Fat Shark, for example, if you talk about those, you'll tend to get that kind of Marmite or Vegemite reaction. There'll be lovers and there'll be haters. And there's not a lot of people in the middle. But everyone has their own experiences. And again, this list is all based on mine. So it isn't stuff I've read in a forum. It's actually how those products have performed for me in my own flying as part of the hobby. But the last slide is probably the most telling one. Because as a reviewer that's lucky enough to get your hands on lots of technology, the telling list is what do you actually fly? Not what are you reviewing and trying to get people to buy, which an awful lot of channels are about on YouTube these days. It's about if you have an opportunity to go up the field for an hour, what are you going to take and what are you going to use? So stripping everything back, let me talk about what that list currently looks like. And a caveat with this list is that this does change. The models that I love and enjoy tend to be the ones that I've made recently. And the next time I build a model, that might supersede one of the ones I've already got and then replace that in my heart and in my model memory. My daily drivers are my Fat Shark HDO2s with the rapid fire module in it. That is the one that I take to the field and I use them day after day after day. I must have hundreds and hundreds of flight hours on those things. They just work. They don't let me down. I've had to replace the fan on mine because it started to make a noise like a washing machine that was full of spanners. Uh, I think the bearing just gave out. It had been used that much, but they just work flawlessly and that's part of the fun of why I like Fat Shark. 
in terms of the radios that I use, the two radios that I'm using, uh, with access to all the different radios that I've got here, I've got this, which I use, and I also am flying a lot with my Tyrannus X9D+, Plus, uh, which is very old now. She's... I don't know if radios uh, are male or female, but I always think of my Tyrannus as female, weirdly. Um, that has been going now for six odd years uh, had lots of different things replaced on it um, but it's still going along and that's has all my model memories in there it's the one that I tend to use uh, when I'm quickly going to the field because it has a little case that fits the goggles in the fat shark goggles and the Tyrannus in it's just quick and easy to use in terms of the wings there are three that are constantly getting flown at the moment one is the Atom RC Dolphin which I've already talked about the other one's the Diatone uh, Ripper R690 and the last one is uh, the E-Wings models that I built last year. Bigger, heavier, more imposing, louder, more powerful uh, but for those days when I just want to zoom around uh, those are the ones that I'm flying. In terms of quadcopters then there's only two or three that I'm grabbing when I go to the field. There's obviously the HGLRC Recon 5 which I've already talked about, the Gep RC Crocodile Mini, the 4-inch model I briefly looked at earlier in this video is just epic it does everything I want to it allows me to take off uh, lithium ion support so it'll fly for ages and just go and explore the local countryside it suits exactly how I like to fly and the last one is the Armatan Tadpole it is high speed aggressive fun beautifully tuned and just a fantastic piece of kit and that doesn't have all the GPS stuff in but it is just fantastic to hoot around and fly and then the other thing that's taken to the field is the GGI HD system. When I'm flying it, that's the one that I'm choosing, sticking an air unit in whatever it is, typically along with a flight controller, and then using those goggles when I want that beautiful HD experience. So that's the list. Those are the things that if you ever see me flying at field, there's an excellent chance I'll have two, three, or four of those things on that list flying around and having a fun time with my mates. So in summary, you will have noticed that a lot of the things on this list are not cheap. And the hobby is one of those things that you get what you pay for. If you buy something cheap, you might end up buying it two or three times. The quality and the amount of effort that goes into it, quality control for some products in the hobby is laughable. Uh, there are some brands that actually care about that stuff and you check things before they ship them out. You know, things like the HGLRC stuff, Armatan, those kind of people when they ship a product, there's a QC sticker or a check in the box when you buy it. Gives you confidence that it wasn't just soldered together on a Friday afternoon and someone was looking at the clock waiting to go home and missed a bit before they stuck it in a piece of cellophane and popped it in the post to you. And I find that paying a little bit more for something can bring rewards in terms of reliability, feel, and just the robustness of that and how it performs. That doesn't mean that cheap stuff isn't bad. There are loads of cheap things in the hobby that are really good to fly. But my experience is that the stuff that isn't the cheapest uh, is normally the most fun. But I guess that's the same with most things, isn't it? Some of the stuff on this list, things like your charger, your goggles, your radio, are investments in the hobby. And where you might start out with a cheap and cheerful radio that has limited capability, as you move up, as I talked about with my Tyrannus, that's been five or six years. Uh, the HDOs I've had for three or four years, the HDO2s, um, and they are still my daily drivers. If you invest in a decent piece of kit and you look after it, it will last you for years and years. So although something might be a couple of hundred pounds you'll still be using it four or five years from now and having enjoyment with it this list will change as time passes in a month from now some of the things on this list might change and that's one of the great things however if you go back and watch my kit picks from summer 2020 last year you'll notice there's an awful lot of similarities some of the names may have changed but the kind of thoughts and the manufacturers are staying pretty much the same. And that's because those people who are committed to quality and bringing out good models are still the kind of people who are committed to quality and bringing out good models. Uh, that really hasn't changed. There hasn't been a lot of new entries into the hobby, particularly since the bubble burst around the whole quadcopter thing. So hopefully that's interesting for you if 
you are looking to buy something. Again, this is all based on my own personal experience. These are all pieces of technology that I myself has had my hands on. Again, I think the most telling list is the one uh, that I actually talk about the things that I fly and that I use. Uh, that is based on what I personally like to do as a pilot. So if you don't like doing that exact same thing, your picks might be slightly different. But if you ask uh, somebody like a reviewer, so what is it you actually fly? That's probably will tell you everything you need to know about which of the latest fantastic goggles they're reviewing are the ones that they'll actually take to the field themselves if it's just them having a flying day. So thanks again for sticking with it, uh, and hopefully we'll do this again in another 12 months, uh, and we'll see how much this list changes. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media, and if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy-to-follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.